I'm going to try to do my demonstration today left-handed because, well, I've tweaked something in my right tricep here and it's not quite healed yet. Uh, and anyway, you guys, if you've looked at my videos, you know that I like to try to throw left-handed, not because I think uh, even if I were 40 years younger, I wouldn't necessarily think I could do that in a game, but it's such a good way to double-check myself what I think I'm finding out right-handed. From your good side, you can just naturally do certain things that appear to have good results, but you're not doing them well. And you can double check that by going around to the left side and seeing if you can replicate exactly what you're doing and, and not throw well left-handed, but throw better than you would if you weren't adding these little tweaks. So throwing left-handed is a great way to check out what you think you're learning from your good side. Of course, if you're left-handed, then vice versa. Um, I'm John Harris. This is smallballsuccess.com. Check out our website, please. Um, I do not recommend here things that are for everybody. I keep saying that over and over again, especially with the pitching. I was never a pitcher. I never pretended to be a pitching coach. But one thing that I do know that very few pitching coaches know is what it's like to be 5'9 and have a broad body type. Since there are so few pitchers like that, especially nowadays, uh, what they show their protégés, their students, is what works for guys that are six foot two or whatever they are, tall, lean guys. And naturally, the six foot two, six foot four, tall, lean guys prosper from that kind of instruction because it's coming from somebody with their body type. They don't have a coach like me, who's, uh, you know, if if the lesson is to step straight toward the plate and let that let that long stride take you closer to the plate and come from 11 o'clock with your lean frame. Well, I don't have any of that. My stride doesn't take me very close to the plate. I don't have a lean frame. I have a wide frame, and 11 o'clock is very awkward for me. So what I'm trying to do is to use my broad frame to accelerate the ball kind of sidewise. And I actually, instead of stepping toward the plate, I've talked about this in other videos, I want to open up a little bit, which of course is usually a no-no, and I want to try to keep my other members moving approximately in the plane and the wheel that's created by that front leg. I want to bring through my front arm and then my back arm is coming down about 10 o'clock or even 9.30. This is an overhead angle that I'm going to show you, but it's a low uh, overhand angle. Um, Again, this is it's not for everybody, but uh, if you want to pitch and if you're a shorter guy who's built more like me, maybe this would work for you. I think this accelerates the ball very well. I think the um, one particular thing that I've, I'm kind of wanting to take back that I said in an earlier video, I was talking about uh, giving the front leg a little kick, and that may have been in a submarine video, but... I'm not going to do that here, and this is why. It's the whole thing about keeping all the members in that wheel that's going toward the plate. If I kick toward the plate, then I'm, I'm going just straight up and down, straight north and south. And if I'm throwing from here, after I do a kick, then a lot of energy is leaking out at the sides. I don't have everything going down the funnel. So... Uh, I'm actually going to try to keep my forward leg, or since I'm throwing left, it's this one. I'm going to give uh, a pump and use the pump to take a little hop, and that'll give me some drive toward the plate. But then I'm going to straighten out the front leg and let it flop open. I, I'm not going straight toward the plate. I'm going to open up a little bit toward third base. And then this is critical. This is something especially I want you to see in the video. I'm going to try, and I've got to keep working on this, but I'm going to try to use my front arm to get more power into this swing, or into the delivery. It's usually assumed that the legs, the lower body, that stride, that's where all of your power toward home comes. I think that there's something being left out there that's very important. Okay, the leg... That's coming open. That's giving me a lot of drive, but I still have the front side, the upper side, the front arm, the right arm in this case. 
I, I want to have that delay a little bit. One of the worst things I can do, I think, is to have arm and leg come down at the same time because then the wheel effect, the one, two, three, four, the cartwheel effect is ruptured and I'm losing my energy. I want to have the... I've got to get that arm out early to sort of keep my balance after my leg starts forward. But I also, I want that front arm to stay behind. It's like a hitter when he gets the foot down and starts his weight shift, but he holds his hands back. He leaves them behind a little bit to, as they say, say stretch the rubber band. That's what I want to do if I can. And this is all happening so fast that it takes so much work. You know, you can do this just in, the, in your workout room without even throwing anything. But just practice that. Keep the weight behind a little bit. And then come through hard and fast with it. And that's, it's when you start coming through with the bottom hand that you lift your top hand. Another really bad thing that you can do is lift up the rear hand too soon. And that's when you arch your back and your head stays up and you fall off to one side way too much and the ball goes flying out into the left-hander's batting batter box and it, it's way too high. So remember delay that forward arm but then don't let the rear arm, don't let the hand with the ball come up until you start to throw that front elbow into the pitch. Delay the rise of your throwing hand and then it'll just, you know what, it'll just flow right through as, as natural as anything. That's been my experience. Um, don't worry about velocity. Uh, the velocity will come. If you get this fluidity of this whole thing down, the velocity will come. So, uh, work on it. And now I'm going to do a demonstration. Ha ha.